In the next few lectures, we'll introduce text normalization, the process of turning a text into a standard formatting of words or sentences. And we'll start by thinking about word tokenization, breaking up a text into tokens that represent individual words or parts of words. Every NLP task requires text normalization, and we normally think about at least three processes involved in normalization. One is tokenizing or segmenting out the words. And then once we've tokenized these words, we want to normalize them into a format. So we have a standard format for our text. And we're also going to have to segment larger chunks, sentences, or sometimes even paragraphs. Now, the simplest way to tokenize is just to use the space between characters. And that works well for languages that have space characters. So languages that use the Latin writing system or Arabic or Cyrillic or Greek, um, this is a very useful way to break off a word. A word is a thing in between spaces. So let's introduce some simple Unix tools for text processing and starting with the Unix TR command, which is useful for space-based word tokenization. And our goal here is to take a text file and output word tokens and their frequencies. We're gonna introduce some standard Unix tools that are used for text processing. So I have here a corpus of Shakespeare, Shakespeare's complete works. You can see here's the sonnets, and it goes on through all the plays. So let's start by extracting all the words in the corpus. So we're going to do this using the TR program. All right, so the TR program takes character, and it maps every instance of that character into another character. And we specify TR-C, which means complement. So it means take every character that's not one of these characters and turn it into this character. So in this case, it's take every non-alphabetic character and turn it into a carriage return. So we're going to replace all the periods and commas and spaces in Shakespeare with new lines. So we're going to create one line, one word per line in this way. So let's look at that. So there's, we've now turned the sonnets into one word per line. And now we're going to sort those words to let us look at the unique word types. So let's do that. And you can see here's all the A's. There's a lot of them. A occurs a lot in Shakespeare. And that's this is a very boring way to look through all of Shakespeare. We don't want to do this. So let's instead use the program unique and the program unique will take that sorted file and tell us for each unique type the count of times that it occurs so let's try that so here we have all the words in shakespeare um, with a count along the left this is the product of the unique program and we can walk through so we know that in Shakespeare, the word achievement with a capital A occurs once, the word Achilles appears 79 times, the word acquaint six times, and so on. So that's interesting, but um, it would be nice if we didn't have to just look at these words in alphabetical order, but if we could look at them in frequency order. So let's take this same um, list of words and now resort it by frequency. So now we have um, the most frequent word in Shakespeare is the word the, followed by the word I, followed by the word and, and we have the actual counts in Shakespeare. So that here is our lexicon of Shakespeare sorted in frequency order. There are some problems. One is that the word and occurs twice because we didn't uh, map our uppercase words to lowercase words. So let's, let's fix the mapping of case first. So let's try that again. We're going to map all of the uppercase letters to lowercase letters in Shakespeare. And we're going to pipe that to another instance of the TR program, which replaces all of the non-alphabetics with uh, new lines. And now we're going to do our sorting as we did before. We're going to do use unique to find all the individual types unique dash she tells us the actual count and then we're going to sort again it means numerically and r means start from the highest one and then we'll look at those so let's do that all right so now we've solved the problem of the and so now we only have lowercase and we don't have our uppercase and 
appearing. But um, we have another problem. We have this D here. Why is the word D or the word S, why are they so frequent in Shakespeare? Of course, tokenization in most real situations isn't as simple as I've suggested with the simple Unix tools. So one problem is you can't just blindly remove punctuation because you have words in which the punctuation is part of the word, PhD or at and There are lots of classes of these punctuation tokenization interactions. So prices have dollar signs or periods or euro symbols and dates might have slashes or dashes. And of course, URLs and hashtags and email addresses all have punctuation. So we have to deal with that in a special way. Another problem is clitics. A clitic is a word that doesn't stand on its own. So the word are in the, in the English word we are is shortened and kind of attached to the word we, or in French, the word je or the word le tend to attach to their neighboring words. And these clitics, we have to decide whether those are separate words, we want to pull them off or not. And this question about what counts as a word applies for multi-word expressions, words like New York, should that be one word or two words? Rock and roll, one word or three? So most standard tokenization programs for English or languages with similar writing systems deal with each of these issues. So here's, for example, a simple Python tokenizer in the natural language toolkit that has little regular expressions for dealing with hyphens and abbreviations and currency and whatnot. But what about all the languages that don't have spaces between words? Many languages, Chinese, Japanese, Thai, or among them, don't use spaces to separate words. How do we decide where a token boundary should be in these languages? So let's, for example, look at word tokenization in Chinese. Chinese words are composed of characters called hanzi, or sometimes just zi. And each of these characters represents a meaning unit called a morpheme. We'll talk about morphemes later. Every word has about two and a half characters on average. But deciding what counts as a word is complex in Chinese and not agreed upon. So imagine the following Chinese sentence, meaning that Yao Ming reaches the finals. Yao Ming Jin Ru Dong Jue Sai. Now, is that three words? Yao Ming reaches the finals? Maybe that should be five words. Maybe we separate Yao Ming's first and last names. And uh, maybe, well, finals really has got two parts, the overall part and the rest of finals. Or we could just separate it into characters altogether. And now the two parts of the word reach, which are both verbs themselves, become separate words. So we just, everything becomes a character. So in fact, this last solution is very common. It's very common in Chinese to just treat characters as tokens, and then segmentation becomes very simple. But in other languages like Thai and Japanese, more complex word segmentation is required. And here the standard algorithms are uh, neural sequence models trained by supervised machine learning, things that we'll talk about later on in the course. Word tokenization is an important step in text normalization. Here we introduce two baseline method, space-based tokenization and character-based tokenization, and we'll turn to more advanced methods in future lectures.